Hi everyone, welcome to TSAM Digital. My name's Amy and today I'm joined by Gordon Twito Duncan, who is co-founder at Gaia Lens. So welcome Gordon, it's great to have you on this channel. Hi Amy, good to speak to you. Thank you. And of course, Gaia Lens is sponsoring the Summit for Asset Management ESG next week in London. So we wanted to put a little spotlight on you and your company. So to start with, could you just give a little intro into yourself and tell us about Gaia Lens? Sure. I'm Gordon, one of the co-founders of Gaia Lens. Uh, Gaia Lens provides a data-driven, transparent and real-time ESG analytics platform for institutional investors. We achieve this by combining cutting-edge technologies and the latest thinking in ESG investing. The guidelines platform is comprised of a suite of tools to help investors fulfill their ESG needs. Uh, this includes ESG portfolio reporting, investment screening, and deep dive research capabilities. Overall, we aim to simplify ESG for investors using technology. That's great. So what kind of things need simplifying then? Tell me, tell me a little bit about the challenges that asset managers are facing when it comes to their operations data with regards to ESG. Yeah, operationally, uh, asset managers need to keep up with the ever-changing sustainability regulations and frameworks. Um, there are some impending deadlines coming up, uh, such as the SFDR one at the start of next year, which requires the reporting on over 50 metrics at the portfolio level. Um, there is also the ever-present risk of being accused of greenwashing as well, which has become a big topic this year. Uh, when it comes to data and technology, the challenges are, are just as big. Uh, ESG data is inconsistent unstandardized and has a lot of gaps. So can you tell me a little bit about how your firm will help asset managers overcome these issues? Sure. Uh, our platform acts as, a, as an automated ESG analyst team, which can support investors through the whole ESG investment lifecycle and save them a significant amount of time and money. Concerning the sort of first challenge, the operational challenges, um, we have mappings to all the major sustainability frameworks and using our ESG analytics platform, asset managers can upload a portfolio and assess the performance of their portfolios with respect to these frameworks in minutes. Uh, regarding the data and technology challenges, uh, we've built a tech-first data-driven platform that does all the necessary mapping, processing, and cleaning for asset managers to make sure that they have the highest quality and most up-to-date ESG data. Asset managers can access our data in two main ways. So, Firstly, they can access the data through our best-in-class web app, which makes it really easy to upload a portfolio or search through over 17,000 companies and get instant results. Uh, secondly, asset managers can access our data through our APIs, and all our data is refreshed on a daily basis. So asset managers can get the latest uh, ESG data for over 17,000 companies. That's great. And can you tell me a bit about what that looks like day to day? So if I'm a portfolio manager using these platforms and these tools, what will I specifically be benefiting from? What will that look like? Sure. So a common use case um, uh, would be to uh, have your portfolio uploaded on, on our system. Um, then investors can very quickly check the headline numbers. How is their portfolio performing compared to a benchmark? They can choose any benchmark that they commonly use. Um, then they can see uh, the overall numbers, but also we allow them to drill right down into the, the most granular level of detail. So if they want to see individually how their, their holdings are performing, they can do that. If they want to look at their performance, uh, the portfolio performance in the context of these frameworks, they can do that as well. You know, see for every SFDR metric, for example, how their portfolio is performing versus the index. But also if they want to see at the stock level, they can do that as well. And they can see exactly the, the the raw number, the raw data for each SFDR metric compared to we give like an industry median or a, or a regional median. Um, but we also have a lot of a really powerful new system as well. So this sort of runs alongside our ESG scores and, and our reporting frameworks uh, capabilities. Um, so that means investors can keep up to date with all the ESG news concerning their portfolios, any scandals, any trends in the news. Um, again, potentially use our news for to detect any greenwashing um, of, of, from the corporate side, uh, meaning, for example, the, the news allows them to see what corporates are sort of saying they're doing and actually what they are doing, uh, according, to, according to the press. Yeah, it sounds like a really valuable tool to have, especially given the co constantly evolving landscape right now. Um, so that's the portfolio performance and trend side. You mentioned earlier there are some regulatory requirements coming in next year. Can you touch upon that and tell me a little bit more about how your firm helps with reporting requirements? Sure. So 
It's uh, there. There are a lot of sort of outstanding regulations. I mean, I think one source I read recently um, uh, stated that there are over three thousand different sort of re- ESG sustainability regulations and policies out there in the world. So there's there's a lot for asset managers to keep uh, on top of. Um, so we try and do all the heavy lifting for asset managers and make this uh, as sort of uh, feasible and and easy as possible to to report uh, for these frameworks. So. Um, our, our first step was really making sure that we cover the main ones uh, which are coming up where, and, and everyone uh, sort of is talking about. So these include the UN SDGs, EU taxonomy, TCFD and the SFDR. Um, as I mentioned, the SFDR deadline is coming up uh, early next year. The EU taxonomy is also uh, sort of ramping up in 2023 as well. Um, so really, we try to offer a comprehensive ESG reporting tool to help asset managers meet these requirements. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, we, we show the, the headline numbers for these sustainability frameworks, but also allow them to see exactly where these numbers come from. Um, so for EU taxonomy and UN SDGs, we're, we're largely talking about sort of revenue alignment numbers. Um, and that that's especially the EU taxonomy is developing all the time. Um, so so we keep up to date on all, all those sort of developments um, to make sure that asset managers have all the right numbers at their disposal. That's great. And you've kind of led in nicely into my closing question about, you know, how you're helping asset managers scale and what their focus is moving forward. Um, as a final thought, what would you like to see from the industry? And what do you think that they're kind of lacking in when it comes to focusing their attention on these issues that you're solving? So we we are trying to help uh, asset managers scale their businesses really through being their innovative ESG tech solution. So due to the strength of our offering, we can support asset managers launching new ESG products, for example, Article 8 and Article 9 funds. We also can help asset managers increase their AUM through tracking themes which are important to certain geographies, for example, modern slavery in Australia. Um, You know, we're we're trying to enable asset managers to have confidence in their ESG analysis, which in turn gives their clients confidence that they're on top of it as well. And for example, for our anchor client, uh, which is a London-based asset manager, We form an integral part of their ESG strategy because we are this one-stop shop for ESG portfolio reporting, investment screening, and deep dive research. Um, In in terms of what what we want to see in the industry, uh, I mean, we're well positioned to to benefit from, I guess, a few different scenarios. You know, I think there is a push to more uh, standardization of sort of ESG reporting and what actually, how you should calculate an ESG score rating. but what we try and do in the short term now is is one of our key founding tenants was creating transparency in our platform and our ESG scores. So we have fully explainable ESG scores. We can show uh, our users exactly where each score comes from. Um, you know, we've got four levels of scores, which we can take them through right down to the most granular level of detail. Um, so even if, uh, you know, there, there's still going to be some... Uh, some discrepancy between different methodologies going forward for the foreseeable future until there is sort of unified uh, standardization but uh, we're well placed to, to deal with to deal with any sort of scenario uh, if, if standardization does come in you know we can quickly map to that we're very flexible and we can make sure that we're um, we can we can meet those kind of standards um, but in the short term as I say because we have this transparent transparent scores um, you know, we can also show our users exactly what our methodology is and, and where our scores are coming from. Yeah, that's great. You do seem to be ahead of the game there because I do see that ESG data challenges are the biggest problem at the moment, you know, in terms of not having those granular details and the rating is not giving the whole picture. So it's nice that you're kind of offering that at a time when standardization isn't there. And like you say, when that comes in, you'll, you'll be ready to kind of adapt and offer an even better offering. Um, so that's great. So thanks so much, Gordon. Obviously, you're speaking at the event on uh, Wednesday in London, so you can expand on these a little bit more and dive into some of those areas. Um, but for now, thanks so much for joining us on the channel. Thank you. Great to speak to you. Yeah, and thanks everyone for watching.